Hey everyone, today I want to go over gardening in raised beds. So I've done a video similar to this going over my grow bags and today I want to focus on what I consider to be kind of the foundation of my garden, which is my raised beds. So I'm going to show you around what's growing in my raised beds, give you a little bit more information about them, and then go over some of the pros and cons of using these in your garden. So let's go take a look. So I have a total of four raised beds in my garden. I think for the size of my garden, that's a pretty good number. I might be able to get away with one or two more, but I don't want it to be overcrowded and I want to leave enough room for my other containers. So the four I have is I have one back there, the largest ones in the center. There's another one in the back corner and then swinging around here, this is actually the raised bed that kind of started my whole garden journey. So a few years ago, we were renting a place and only had an outdoor deck. So I did a quick search for raised beds and I came across this bed from Home Depot. Now the brand for this is Gronomics and that's actually the brand of all my beds. I have never tried another raised bed, but since this was the one I found at Home Depot, it was a pretty good price compared to other beds that I found. I went with it, I've liked it, so that's why I've continued buying from this brand. So this one I got through Home Depot, the size is 18 by 48. It's the shortest, shortest of all of the raised beds that I have. The two on the back wall are the exact same bed, so they're both 24 by 48. And the largest one here in the center, this one is 34 by 48. And obviously the larger they are, the more expensive they get. All of these are the raw version of the wood. I know that they have some that are sanded down, but these are all are what they call the um, rough sawn cedar wood. And I really like the look of them. Again, this is the oldest one I have. It's definitely a much lighter color than it used to be compared to these that are a bit more brown, but I do really like the aged look of these beds. This one again I got from Home Depot. The other three I ordered directly from the Gronomics website and that's what I would recommend doing if you decide to go with this brand just because one they had sales that weren't running at Home Depot so I got about $50 off and second I just had an overall better experience with ordering, shipping, and customer service. So that's a little bit about where I got my beds. Again, these you can build pretty easily if you have those skill sets, I do not. Um, and there are plenty of other companies that also sell these raised beds, but Gronomics worked well for me with the first bed, so that's what I went with for the rest of them. Since this bed back here is the least full of plants, uh, I wanted to show this one a little bit more up close. So there is a liner that comes with the bed that I don't know if I can see poking out anywhere in here, um, but it's just like a black liner that has drainage, hole, drainage holes, kind of feels like a mesh material that comes with the bed. You lay it down and then pour the soil on top of it. The raised beds that I have all are set up on my drip system. So I don't have enough pieces for my drip system to set up all of my containers, but the raised beds were the obvious number one since one there the largest containers, um, and two, they're in a pretty stable position. So I know where these are going to sit in my garden. I can't really move them anymore. Whereas some of these containers are a bit more mobile. So I didn't want to set up the drip if I didn't know for sure where they were going to remain permanently. So all of these raised beds are set up on drip. They get watered at the same time every day. And how drainage works on these is there's actually slats. So actually, let me come over here and see if I can show you the bottom of the bed. So underneath here, if you can see that, you basically lay these wooden slats down at the bottom of the bed when you're building it. And there's about an inch spacing between each slat and that's where the water drains from the bed. Up here, you can see the drip running through this bed. And again, the drip running from here. And I think this bed is actually the most full, although it's competing pretty closely with the center bed um, in terms of how big the plants are already. Uh, after the soil, I did put a layer of mulch down just to maintain the moisture in these beds, but all of the plants seem pretty happy unless they have some sort of 
external pest control issue, which I'm currently experiencing here with these petunias, but more about that later. The overall construction of the beds is pretty easy. I put all of these together myself, so I think the hardest part was actually just carrying them from downstairs all the way up here. But on my own, I think each bed took maybe 10 minutes maximum for me to build. So super easy to put together. The only tool that you need is a mallet and then everything else uh, comes together in the packaging. But now I'm going to give you an up close look at what exactly I'm growing in each of these beds. We might as well start here in the middle in this bed. So this is what I see from inside of the house looking out into the garden. It's the very first thing that you kind of walk towards when you go into the garden. So I wanted this to be what I would consider the prettiest. So basically full flowers, some that are just there to look nice, some like the zinnias that I can use potentially as cut flowers in bouquets. So up here I have Supertunia bubblegum. This one is currently being attacked by budworms. I found them a few days ago. So I've been dealing with that the last few days, but overall there are still a lot of blooms, so they look pretty good. Um, I have a Super Bells cherry here in the middle. I think I would probably change this next year because these, one, don't grow as fast or as vigorous as the Supertunias, and two, I don't think they like as much water as the Supertunias either. Uh, so I probably wouldn't plant them in the same bed and just go with some more of the vigorous Supertunias. Behind them I have two different Zinnia mixes. So this first one here I got from a local nursery. It was a mixed color variety, so I wasn't sure what I was getting, but we have a lot of oranges, a few reds, whites, and some pinks. The reason I got these is because the zinnias that I started indoor from seed didn't seem to be doing too well, but if I take a step back, you can actually see that they did end up doing pretty well overall. So these are much taller than the ones that I got from the garden center, but they were also a mixed variety in the seeds. So, so far I can say I have a red one, a yellow one over there, pink, and I think that one's probably going to be red as well. Swinging around the corner, just more supertunias. I basically planted four total, one in each corner. You can see how big one plant gets. Back here I have a couple delphiniums, which I had and I couldn't put them anywhere else, so I kind of put them in here. Uh, again, I don't know if that's something I would do normally, but I had the space and I didn't want to get rid of the seedlings, so they're back here now. And if they grow pretty tall, they are perennial, so I can leave them in this bed and they'll come back next year. So that's the center bed. If we come over here to the original bed that started my garden journey, so this one in the back, I have sweet peas that are growing up two trellises that I just kind of tucked into the bed. The sweet peas haven't done that great this year. I don't know if it's because we had really hot, then colder than average, then back to really hot temperatures, but they're still growing. I just haven't had a ton of blooms on them. I was in the spring growing snap peas in this bed and I pulled those a couple weeks ago as we got into the warmer heat of summer and I replaced it with two melon plants. So here is a honeydew and I think it's called snow leopard, but they're gonna be really pretty white melons with uh, green veining. So I'm excited to see that. Over here I have a watermelon plant and this one is actually growing like personalized size, tiny watermelons. You can actually see one right in here. I just think it's so cute. So that's what's in this bed. Oh, also probably gonna regret this, but a random sunflower. Again, it's very hard for me to get rid of seedlings that I need to thin, but instead I'll just put them somewhere and see if it works. But that sunflower could potentially get as large as that sunflower. It probably won't in this bed, but we'll see what it does. If I have to pull it, I have to pull it. This bed are more melons and more petunias that have been attacked by budworms. These actually seem to be a little bit more impacted, so I gave them a pretty good haircut took off almost all the blooms because almost all of them were damaged. So I'll just kind of keep an eye on that going forward, see if the blooms recover. If not, then I'll just pull the plant. But the two melons that I have in here, so another one of the snow leopard honeydew and then a cantaloupe are pretty much taking over the entire bed. And you can see how far down the cantaloupe plant is already trailing. So I think I have learned that 
two melon plants is a pretty good number for one raised bed. The final raised bed over here, these, except for the petunias up front, are all flowers that I started from seed. I didn't get any that were already plants. And this one is taking the longest to actually fill in. Um, so again, I have petunias up front. Then I have some gomfrina here. These plants are actually a mystery seed, not on purpose, but because I got a packet and then I threw the packet away and I have no idea what they were. And then in the back here, I have a few more delphiniums. Again, if these grow nice, if they do well in the bed, I'm gonna be able to keep them in there and they'll come back every year. So it'll just kind of give me something uh, to always look forward to in these beds. And then with the annuals, I can do with them whatever I want and switch them up each year. But that's a look at what is growing right now in my raised beds. So now I want to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of using these types of containers in your garden. I would say the biggest pro for me is that it really does kind of set the foundation for my garden. It's the largest pieces. It really kind of creates the space and then I feel like the other containers like the grow bags or the more typical terracotta ceramic pots are like the accent pieces but it really is the raised beds that set the overall tone for the space. Second benefit or pro of the raised beds is just the size. Um, so I can grow a lot in one bed. I don't have to have a million different containers. I can fit multiple plants in one of these raised beds. And then also I like that they are elevated and that is something I wanna point out. So when I first started doing research and I would type in just raised bed, I often found a lot of the beds that are meant to be on the ground. So they have the sides, but no bottom. Obviously, if you are gardening on a deck or balcony, you need to have a bottom. So if you search for the term elevated bed, that might get you a bit closer to what you're looking for. But I do like that these are elevated off the ground. Especially, you know, the older I get, it might be a little bit harder for me to be bending down all of the time. So being able to garden while standing up just really takes a lot of pressure off of like my back and my knees. So I really like that. It just makes them a lot more accessible. I think the raised beds are also just very aesthetically pleasing. I would say they are probably the prettiest part of my garden, and although that's not anywhere near the most important factor, it is nice just to have a space that you really like, that really makes you happy, and that's just visually appealing overall. Now, for some of the cons, I would say the biggest one is going to be the price, at least compared to other containers. So I think most of these beds were between 200 to 250, and I would wait until on the Gronomics website I saw a sale so that I could get a little bit of a discount. But I'd say most of the elevated beds like this that I was seeing online were at least a couple hundred dollars, so it is an investment piece. And each of these I saved up for over time. So I think it was a total of about three years that it took me to actually get all of the raised beds that I have now. So it is an investment. You wanna do a bit more research just to make sure you are spending the money on exactly what you want before you go ahead and purchase. I think the other uh, con to the raised beds is the mobility. So these are heavy, especially when you put soil in it. Actually, without soil, they're not too bad. I can move it around with my husband, um, making sure I'm not damaging the deck, so you wanna pick it up and move it over. But once there's soil in it, they're pretty much where they're going to stay. So you wanna make sure you know exactly where they're at, that they're in a place that you're gonna like to be able to live with that before you fill them with soil and plant them up. But things like grow bags in pots are obviously a lot easier to move around. If certain areas get more shade during the day, you wanna move them to sun, you can do that. You can't really do that with the raised bed. Uh, so again, just the overall size of it kind of makes it much less mobile than the other types of gardens. Now, another potential con that I'm not sure of yet is how long they'll last. Um, with grow bags, you know, I've heard they last about three to four years, which when they come to a price of $5 per bag, um, that's fine with me. I'm hoping I can get at least 10 years out of these raised beds just for the cost of them. The one that I've had the longest I've had for three years, again, you can tell it's aged just by the change in the color, but I leave it out all of winter and it's still holding up and I can still grow plants in it. So that's kind of a to be determined as far as the amount that you're putting into them and then how long you're going to get out of them. 
And that actually brings me to just kind of the last point that I want to talk about in terms of winter care. So I, when I first got these, was kind of thinking, you know, what are the different things I'm going to have to cover them? Am I going to have to, you know, do something to the soil? And I spoke with a local garden center here and they just basically said, no, <laughs> like you can if you want to cover them, but you can just leave them out. They're obviously meant to uh, withstand weather. So I have just left them uncovered all winter. We do get snow here. It does get pretty cold. Um, and then I didn't do anything to the soil except put some leaves on the top, which very promptly blew away in the wind. So if I try that next year, I'll have to chop them up smaller and mix them more in the soil. Um, but they all had soil from last year. They sat there over winter. And then in the spring, what I did is top them off with fresh soil. So I removed all the plants last year and then basically whatever soil was missing in the containers from removing the plants, I added that back in and then I put in a layer of compost. And I mixed that in with all of my beds. And then when I planted anything new, I also used Biotone. So that's essentially all I did to kind of refresh the soil. And it's at least worked really well so far. Again, this is the second year of doing that for most of the beds. It's the fourth year, I guess, doing it with the smallest bed. And the plants so far have been happy. Um, so I'll continue to probably do that going forward. If I notice that oh, as time goes on, if I need to replace more of the soil, take some old soil out and put more in to refresh it, I might have to do that. But so far, just kind of leaving them as is over winter has worked just fine. So I think that is everything in terms of the raised beds. If there are any questions that you have for me, either with the raised beds specifically that I have or just any questions in general for gardening in raised beds on a deck, let me know and I will see them in the comments below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.